Now we're going to talk a little bit about the different arthropods that come to a corpse known as waves. The first wave is going to be composed of flies. Flies are the first to the scene in a short period of time after death, often within minutes. The larvae feed on the semi-liquids and are prevalent early on. The flies are very important in decomposition, actually doing the majority of it. So now let's just look at a few of the flies that might come to a body. So first of all, we have the common house fly. And this, of course, has the sponging mouth parts. Then we also have a stable fly. These also come to the body, and you can tell there that they have that piercing sucking mouth part, which is different than the house fly. Probably the most prominent fly that you will find on a body is the blow fly, and they have a very similar mouth part to the house fly in that it's a sponging type mouth part. In the past, faculty from our department have been involved in the area of forensic entomology, and they've done a number of detailed studies about the developmental time of maggots or the larvae of flies under certain conditions. I also have an interest in forensic entomology, and I'm going to be working with the UNL Forensics Department to teach forensic students about how insects can be used in forensics. There is a property near UNL where the Forensics Department can even do studies using pigs or other animals to study succession, which is the order in which insects come to a body, depending on what state of de decomposition it's in. The last picture was early stage where a fly was visiting a fresh corpse and laying eggs. As I mentioned, flies are the first to come to a body. This slide shows a bit later in the decomposition process, where now we can see a larger number of maggots feeding. They will be a significant contributor to the decomposition process, as I mentioned earlier. So here is a close-up of some of the maggots that you might see on a body. Now we are going to discuss the second wave. During this part of decomposition, the odors are going to change as body decomposes. So you're going to see that many of the fluids that were found initially are starting to dry out, and therefore you're going to see different types of arthropods attracted to the body. During the second wave, you're going to primarily see beetles. The corpse is basically dried out, although it is going to continue the decomposition process. And so at this point, the body will no longer be attracted to flies because it's too dried out. So over the next few slides, I'm going to show you some examples of carrion beetles that you may find at a body. So here's one of them. And here's another example of a carrion beetle. And here is a third type. And these are all very common carrion beetles in Nebraska and ones that have been recorded by crime scene investigators. In addition to beetles that are helping in the decomposition process, you're also going to have some different predators that may come to the body. In particular, the rove beetles as seen here. They feed on maggots that may still be present. So you will have some insects helping with the decomposition and then other scavengers and predators that feed on other remains that are present there. Dung beetles may also show up at this stage of the decomposition process. Now during the second wave, you can also see other insects like roaches that are scavengers or other arthropods such as spiders and centipedes that are predators. Ultimately, we will see a third wave of insects moving in. These are primarily, again, going to be beetles, such as the dermestids and mealworms. Now, at this point, only things that are remaining of the body are the hair and bones, and it may actually take up to three years for the body to reach this stage. Now here's an example of one type of dermestid beetle, just to give you an example of what one looks like. This particular species is called a larder beetle. And here we see an immature stage of a dermestid beetle. So dermestids can be very helpful in the museum industry because they can clean skeletons. However, they can be quite a nuisance pest for entomologists because they can destroy our insect collections. So therefore, we usually have to put some sort of repellent in with our insect collections, such as a mothball chemical, in order to prevent damage from these dermestid beetles. And finally, here is a picture of a mealworm, which is also attracted to a corpse during this third wave. So over there on the left-hand side, you have the larvae of the mealworm, then you have the pupa, and then the adult is actually a black beetle.